Hello, this is Victor. I'm here on the second part of the painting tutorial of the Dwon, the Nargal Dwon. And this time I'm going to start with the washers. So it will take uh, quite a, it will take a bigger brush than this one. It will take this one. This is the shade um, brush. And we are going to apply a bit. Uh, Overall, except on the skin, I will try to avoid to go in the skin, but all the other parts are going to be washed with Aglax Air Shade. Uh, this is the always the magical wash. And no, I just have to find my pot of Aglax Air Shade. Here it is. Uh, so we are going to wash everything except the parts that we did with um, for flesh. And we will start from top to bottom. I like to start from the top to the bottom. Because normally the whites have tendency to 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 go down, okay, to to flow down by gravity. So in that way, I have more control of not having big pools of wash. Although it's Norgo and you can be a little bit dirty on the painting job, uh, you don't want big pools of of uh, wash anyway. It's better that you have control. I prefer to have the control when we do washes and, and know where the wash will go. If you can see the places where the wash will work very well, for example, will be where we have this type of things inside. This will give a very nice... And we are going also to wash the horns because we want these horns to be um, darker than this color, okay? So this will take a lot of time because we need to wash all the miniature, okay? So, uh, and you want to be careful. So, I just wash in different parts to show you how it will look like. But more likely, I will go through the metal. The metal will start, this will uh, kill the shiny of the metallics that we always want to do with the Norgo. We don't want shiny metal. Have the dirty metal is not shiny. And you have to be quite methodic and going from one part to the next to avoid that the, what I did here was not correct, so you want really to finish one part and then go to the next one, because if the white device will give a different shading and will not, so you want to, to really do it before the wash is drying. As you can see, when my uh, my brush is big, you, you want to have some control, okay? Uh, and you want to, you can reinforce when you have this type of things, to put some additional wash. If you see that it's making like a droplet, don't worry. Once this dry, it will be very flat because the wash have very little paint, have a lot of, of um, thinner, a lot of uh, solvent, and have very little paint, so will not clog the tails. Washes normally, if they are in good shape, they should not clog any detail. So this is why when I find uh, like this type of uh, damages on the armor, I go and I put additional effort on these parts. Okay, so I will do here the inside of the propeller. You want you want to do it and more likely we will need to do uh, two layers of wash. Okay. Uh, to it's quite a big surface. Okay. And you have also to be careful not to put the fingers on things that you have washed before. The other option is to wash by sections to so you wash or you shade one section, for example, I shade you now the top of the of the miniature and later on I wait the this device and later on I do uh, and the bottom. Uh, always stop if you want to do it in two parts or in two more in two in two sessions, always stop in a quite in a in in a part that so never stop in the middle. So for example, if you're doing the armor plates, stop at the end of one armor plate. So never stop in the middle of a flat part because then it will be very difficult for you to to wash over and dissimulate the transition between one session and the next one. So always stop in a in a physical finish of the part. No, on a, when the armor plate is finishing, when it's starting a new part of the miniature or something like that. For example, if I want to stop now, I, I should finish first this all this propeller and then I can stop and later on I come back and I continue with, with the washes on the miniature. So, uh, the washes is one of the things that I think you can do it directly from the pot 
I don't see uh, it's quite thin it and I don't see really the add value to put it on a palette. Uh, uh, this is my experience. I know that a lot of people prefer to put everything on a palette, but I think the washes is one of the things that you can do directly from the pot. Uh, okay. So I will keep doing that. So you see how this propeller is looking like right now. You see now that this will um, show all the different details, will pop up all the different details and will help us to, to do the highlights later. Uh, on the flat areas you have to be careful, will look dirty in some areas. This, this is, means we have so many details that it's working quite well, but if you're washing big areas, big flat areas, uh, be careful because you will ha leave behind most most of the times you will see like uh, brush strokes or or you will see like uh, call it watermarks okay because the white will not distribute fully for example here you see was not fully uniform um, so I will do that and I will show you once the wash is done. So this is how the meter looks like now after the wash. Okay, so looks uh, yeah like uh, really look. The wash is not still drying some of the deepest parts, but I, it's ready to do the next step. And next time I will do a wash on the skin, and I will do now a purple wash. Here you have I prepared the purple wash, very light purple, and it is more well I call it wash, but it's going to be more a glaze. I use the color lilac and I really uh, thin it down with a lot of uh, thinner. So the idea is, uh, let me just put it, so the idea is to glaze the, the, the green with purple to give this, to give a, a, a first to differentiate, to, to break, to make it different uh, from the, to give a different tonality versus the armor plates that are also green and also to give this sensation of sick sickness, no, of um, the, the green will give, the purple will give, will enhance this sensation of that something is wrong with this skin, and after that we are going to start working on 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 the different effects. But this is just to preparing the miniature before doing weathering and all the different effects. I did a small mistake there, so let me remove the excess. Okay, so I will apply this. This will give this purple, purple tonality. And once this is applied, as you can see, is nothing. It's really thin down. And I use, I will say, almost three times of thinner versus the quantity of paint. So I really thin it down to make the paint uh, transparent and, and don't kill the the greenish tonality that we already put. Okay, uh, don't worry if it goes too purple in, in some of the recesses. We are going to apply later on a wash that will work better. Better. Okay, but we are going to. I'm going to do that. Okay, you see here. Of course, the the skin is right. This skin is really nasty. Okay, and this is just preparing the the miniature for the paint jobs that we want to do later. So there is a lot of pistols, a lot of scars, and I guess we can make bleeding scars as well because this is why not this Norgal. The there will be some also rotted mm, flesh and all the things that you want to imagine okay if you go on top of this metallic yes you will be able to remove it because it's really thin so I run out of this paint I will keep doing that and I come back once this is done so this is how it looks like after doing this type of wash with the purple thing Okay, and now I'm going to do a second wash, and this time I will use um, what's called this record uh, 
flesh shade, okay, this one, and we are going to apply more localized on the area what we want to give a little bit of reddish color. Okay, so you take this and we are going to apply this, for example, on this big scar here. Okay. We are going to apply it as well next to the metallic. This will kill the excess of purple that uh, just accumulate in that area. Okay. And I'm going to pick as well this type of postures. Okay. Here I will apply. So what I will do, for example, this one here as well. Don't kill completely the violet. I will not do, of course, a wash all over this thing mainly next to the metal even in these areas in these regions here or in these parts of the miniature I will not go I will just focus next to the metal parts example here and when we have this type of post tools and as well when we have this type of scars or that the skin is broken okay here we have a lot of small veins so we can do in this area but not on the I will not apply for example that I will apply here and here I will apply next to the metallic and the advantage is that it will work well even if we go a little bit on top of the metallic okay this will also help to increase the and to what's called to make a, a strong line between and differentiate this where the skin the skin with the armor plates and give more and give more, a little bit more of depth okay so I will keep doing that on the remaining foot for example here on the fold in that case I will go, just go around this thing and you can go again on top of this if some cables you want to give a more for example I can give more a uh, rusted look I will go with this thing. This will increase the readiness, reddish. So, for example, I, I, I will apply a little bit on, on this one. This will create this reddish tonality that will make it look more rusted. Okay. So, I'm going to apply as well on this type of plate that we have on the jeans to, to increase. This will combine well with the. Previous uh, wash with Aglax air shade and this because it's more reddish will enhance the sensation of rusted metal. Okay, this is just as I said is applying the basis to do the the more detailed work later. 
you can apply also in some areas if you want on for example we can apply it here and some of the broken spikes okay but this was an accident okay so we'll we'll increase the sensation do, don't put it everywhere I don't want to do a overall wash but just pinpoint in the parts where you really want to and especially here on the skin where it's touching where the, the skin is touching the metal and I keep pinpointing the different post tools okay so for example here this one I can put a second layer here the previous one okay so I will keep doing that and I come back once this is done so regular flesh shade have been applied you see we can see now all the postals and I also applied here to make it this look more reddish more rusted and as well on some of these corrugate tubes like this here or that one here so I want really to give this more rusted look to some metal so now I'm going to use Dvachi Violet and I'm going, I want to this, give a little bit more of depth to some parts that, uh, that yeah, like for example this one uh, this will uh, what to do that I want to uh, you have to go soft so I use very little um, wash or shade I have to say and I apply just as you can see and try to remove the excess so really try to be very careful not to apply too much so you want to create this sh deep shading of purple okay this will increase the sensation of uh, sick skin but you want to be really careful with that here I will just do okay so this will and especially you want to go on the holes to create this uh, deep well it's deep so you want to wet this clear on inside okay so you want to do it here for example and as well I will apply a little bit here where the skin is more stretched okay, you want to be soft on that, that, that the thing the tricky here is to be soft on how you apply that okay you can also apply on the big postures for example a little bit of purple this will okay just to give what we want here to do is to enhance the sensation of death mm, yeah, dead flesh no So applied here for example on this the base of this tube and apply on this big postal there not on all of them but on some of the big ones and then here again and sometimes I, I reuse the the ones of a clean as you can see I take it sometimes from the when they really clean up not because I am too concerned about because it's, there is not too much and I have better control when I take it from very small portion so you see uh, let's do it as well on the base of the tentacles And 
you can see that if I go very soft I can I don't add too much purple okay and then I can add a little bit more and just apply it on the base and what I want also to avoid is that it's accumulated like that so when that happens I go with the brush let it dry don't apply more because it will go again on the same spot and here I will do the same okay and here that is quite hidden I take very diluted and I go like that and as you can see I avoid to go to the tip of the tentacle or to the, I will say to the extreme of the tentacle here we can add a little bit more of shading okay and then here I will add a little bit more of shading So now I do more or less the regions or parts that I did not do it with the previous wash. Okay. For example, one thing that we can do to increase the sensation of this thing is do something like that and here we can do the same so we take very little and if it's too much like that there's another tip you can take water and before it's drying completely you think so much So here you want to work a little bit here we can put a little bit on this scar for example of purple on this wool make it even deeper last year we're going to apply some, apply some reds at the end as well like yellows So this is skin, this type of skin is the ones that you can really spend time doing washes and, and it's a very skin, very nice uh, thing to practice blendings and all this type of stuff. Because if you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. It's just a nargle thing, so can be nasty and can be nasty skin. Here I will apply a little more of purple on this area. Yeah, this can you want it to make it gross. Then 
we still have this part that is difficult to reach once. This is the type of meter that I never know if it's better to do it assembled or unassembled because when I was painting this before assembling I was rubbing off the paint with my fingers. Now there are some parts that are difficult to reach. So I guess at the end is up to everybody. Just adding some to make it dark. I don't want the shades to be the parts, the hidden parts to be too bright. Okay. So this is how the skin looks like now. Let's put a little bit more of shade, for example, here. If the feeling is too flat. And the inside here. Okay. What I will do is to soften a little bit more the transitions. I take the Kala Lilac, very watered. I will apply it. Let's do it. I'll take a little bit of. Okay, next keep working on the skin and I will do, I, I prefer to do the skin because it's hidden and then later on we are going to do the armor plates and the metallics. Uh, I will back to the base color of the skin, okay, let me find it, here it is, quick khaki. And we are going to reapply on the parts that are more the more, I would say, external parts. Okay. Something like that. Okay. And here I realized that I should put some purple there in the middle. So I take now the color lilac to help me out. I put purple there. And then green. If you don't feel comfortable doing it that way, another way to do it is by the dry brush. Okay, and just next to the Okay. 
So all the parts where we have and here you can you can choose if you want to do these ones or not with green something is too visible I go back with the color we like and I soften okay for example here on the front I have the feeling that is too purple so I apply here things are the tentacles all the type of things I want to go to the this and we can add a little and little more purple to the base This one is missing some purple, so we will add more purple to the base, and later on we are going to apply even darker purple. Don't worry, here is a small mistake, but this is not a big deal. Okay. Up. and we finalize with the pure color we make it fade up with the with the purple okay I'm going to work the other side I'm going to keep doing what you have seen and I come back once this is done so this is how the skin looks like now, okay? And the next I'm going to do is I'm going to use bubonic brown. You can use any type of yellow like that. Uh, maybe you can also use uh, valor brown. But in that case I want to use this bubonic brown. It's like greenish yellow or ochre. Uh, okay? You see, this is a and I'm going to use this for the postules. So I'm going to with passion touch each postule, leaving the surrounding that we did before with the darker color. Also, I will do it here in this scar. I will apply this one like that. Okay. Here, I'm going to do around this tube.
Okay, so I will keep doing that and I come back when this is done. So this is how they look like, okay? And here I was working for the next step to see how to do it. And what I will do next is I will apply Karlburg uh, Crimson, okay? Uh, on the postures, not on the scars. On the scars I, go, I will go for blood, blood for the blood god. So what we are going to do is just where we paint the pistols and to increase the definition of the pistols to make them pop up a little bit more we are going to apply Carrowborg uh, Crimson and because this is a wash what I have to say a shade official this will flow naturally to the base of the postals and this reddish tone will give the sensation of something really infected and looking bad I don't go into the we can do also uh, here okay can work it here and once that does it dry will be matte that is what we want for this part so because I will give the glossy part for the scars I will make like uh, infected and uh, bloody scars okay you have to be careful with the red not to play too much right and in that case we only apply where we have pustules and things like that here I miss them but I think applying just the red will make them pop up and it's good to have some more color than others here okay, and you see here have dry how they look like so Carrowbork Crimson. Remember. I'm not using no. This is not blood for the blood god. I want it to finish matte at this moment. Okay. I like how the skin is looking so far. Okay, next step. I'm going to use no blood for the blood dot. Okay. You can also use the the transparent paint from Tamiya. But I, don't, I will use blood for the blood dot. We are going to dilute because I don't want this to cover all the work we did here okay and we're going to apply this one here on the scar
Okay. And I will say on the big post tools, I will apply a little. Just on the big. And now we wait until all this device before the next step. But this whole the skin is looking like right now. So after applying the blob for the blob gun is looking like that. Sorry, blood for the blood god. And now I go back to apply the previous yellow and I just add a little bit. Okay, and here very careful, just very little. This touch of yellow will make it look a little bit more nasty okay so we just put very little I don't need to touch all the all the postals now just the ones that you can see can give Some of them, this will make it more random. And you know, the nature is random. Here, especially this one here. And I will say that for the skin we can stop here and now work a little bit on the armor plates or on the yeah let's work first on the armor plates because it's very clear what I want to do. On the armor plate we want to do a little bit of edge highlight. Okay. And to do that I will use Ogwin Camo. So what we are going to do is, we are going to very carefully do some edge highlight. We also want to point to touch all these little little rivets. Okay. I will not do anything 
on, on the holes just the edge of the armor here then probably we'll run this part and the rivets okay and we are going to do the same on the turbines or propellers We are going to do this on all the armor plates. The all these ones for sure we are going to do something like that. Well, I want to make... Uh, I want to enhance the segmented looking of the armor plates. So I'm going to do that on all the armor plates and I come back. So this is how it looks like after um, trimming and doing the edge highlight of all the edges and the small uh, rivets we have all over there. Now we are going to work a little bit on the, on the brass. We are going to uh, do also a little bit of edge highlight and um, pinpoint uh, some of the of the yeah of the um, pinpoint the, the it's called the rivets and, and so on. So first I'm using the same color that I, I use uh, as a base color that is brass scorpion brass scorpion okay this one brass scorpion and we are going to put this in some. Parts of the what we especially on these edges. We have to think that normally the edges and the parts that are uh, stand getting out are going to be more exposed to friction in some way, and, and they will show a little bit of. They will be a little bit more polish, while the flat areas and the deep areas will be dirt and dark and. Later on we are going to also to add some rust. So normally when I want to do uh, weathering effects I like to start from a model that is quite nicely painted and from there I start in the rust. Also we are going to, to do some corrections if we have seen that some paint have uh, yeah, if I have dirt in a little bit the brush with other paints or something like that. So uh, I'm going to to add like a little bit of edge highlight and in some parts. But I will not go too light. I I, I see that the game workshop went very light. I I prefer to keep it more on the Cooper side more. Orangey, ready, reddish, and so as you can see here, I just go here and I apply on the rivets. Okay. We can do in that area, in that flat area, some. We see that there's some here, this for example, like a damage. We can do wrong lad. We can do some. Not too much. I don't want to put too much, but here, for example, the way I did these lines, I will. Just follow the same lines, okay. So 
So I will be do, I will do that. In the copper, for example, on these things here, we are going to do as we did there. Something like that. Okay. Uh, when it's like uh, sometimes I like to do to give a more rough finishing. Uh, instead of doing the edge highlight following, I, I go perpendicular to the edge and I do these very small strokes ok I will do the same here So, I will do the same on the other um, turbines, I will also highlight these small deposits, containers here. Okay, something like that. We want the pinpoint rivets. So I will keep doing that and I come back when I have done. So the first layer has been done and now I'm going to apply a little bit of Auric Armor Gold. Not too much, I don't want, as I said, I don't want to go too bright on the bronze copper uh, thing. But I will take a small brush and I will try to just to point very specific, so the, the rivet is one of the points and this brush is bad. So we'll try to probably point the rivet here. We are going to do a little bit of on the sharper edges like that. We don't want to apply too much auric armor gold, it's really bright color and I don't want really to go very bright. And I will not point all the rivets well. So here are these ones on the front, yes, because they're but you can see most of them are already visible. Okay. We are going to play a little bit here. Temple in this case.
Okay. Okay, we got this all thing like that. So very little touch of this, I will do some more rivets and some more other parts but just really have not to be even noticeable and if you want to to, to skip this, this step you can do it but it's just I want to find some of this So I work on that and I come back once this is done. So this is how it looks like. We see that it is a little bit more shiny. And now I'm going to play a little bit of Cadian flesh tone on this type of things there. Okay. What we are going to do is first of all I will apply it on the top. Well, yeah, I just rub the paint off. Okay, and then going from top to bottom. We are going to do this type of lines. I don't touch the things that are between them. We don't have to forget the back. Yeah, it's more difficult to go. I have to go bottom to top because it's not way. There is no way that I can. Like turn. Even that, I cannot go. We want to give this organic looking, right? We wanted it to look organic. The other side that I did before, so this is why you see. Uh, sometimes I need to check it before shoveling the camera to be sure that I'm doing the right thing. Because a lot of these miniatures I paint them for the first time. I'm only, um, yeah, maybe are going to be unique in my collection, so there is no way that I can practice before. Uh, last step, uh, and I will finalize here the second part because it's becoming quite long. And um, I was I want to stop especially here because the next part is going to be all the final weathering. Uh, we are going to do rust. We are going to do um, yeah mainly rust and some lime. We are going to apply some slime. Uh, all these type of things, nasty things. We are going to do later. So the last thing I, I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, a screaming school on this horns. OK. 
Okay. It's almost. Let me change the brush because it will damage this brush if I continue doing it like that. Though it's quite damaged, this one. I will take this one that is worse. It's a like a little bit of dry brush. Trying to keep. the tip lighter. So just to do that, and later on we're going to do a second wash of uh, Seraphine Sepia. Okay. I realized that the contour is too strong, so the way to, to solve it. It's good that I did that because now I, I will do a, I want to keep it dark, I don't want to keep it that bright, white bright. So we are going to do a second wash of self in sepia later on. And we are going to So I do that. Okay. On all these type of spikes, holes, fangs, I don't know how to call these things. I do that and I come back once this is done. So I applied the spinning school and now I'm going to do the second wash because uh, yeah the, the it's too the, the change is too stark too to too aggressive and I want to do this second wash leaving a little bit the tip so the wash and in that case I will go and propose accumulating more wash at the base of You can do more than ones, less than others. As I said, all the things that you want to look organic, you have to be uh, a little bit. Uh, yeah, you you cannot be do the same on everything of them. So you have to add variation. Organic things are not systematic. can be very similar, but very most likely are not going to be the same. Okay, and you see this wash is really helping. I like a lot to work with washers. I think the, the washers from Gage Workshop, or you have to say the shades from Gage Workshop, I always say washers but are shades from Gage Workshop, I think they are really good. I love the Seraphine Sepia, I work their shade, non oil, all these ones. I think are the paints that I, I maybe I, I, it's the ones I use the most. Okay. Move this one here. They want to leave the yellow wish aspect. Okay, and then we can go this darker and this less. You see, it's quite fast this this thing. And the wash is giving very nice results. I wanted to leave it too white. I don't want a big contrast neither with the green. So this white, a little bit of brown, yellowish color is helping. So here I will finalize this this um, second part on the painting tutorial of, of this drone and we are ready to go to the third part where I'm going to do the really nasty things I'm going to do the rusting, I will do rust on all these holes, all these things that we have on the armor um, I'm going to add some like uh, streams of saliva and, and things like that 
and I'm going to work a little bit more on the weapons also to add some rust effects but I think so on and on it's looking quite good and of course I'm leaving the lens for the last thing so but on and on I like a lot how it's looking like I'm really enjoying painting this thing and we are going to do also rust on the copper bronze things okay so yeah let's finalize here this uh, this second part and keep tuned if you want to be to see the next part third part and most likely the last part on the painting tutorial of the, the one that's all for now please leave the comments below let me know what do you think uh, give a like if you have liked it subscribe if you don't subscribe and want to see more and as usual thanks a lot for watching and see you again later bye